working restoration work and Terry Laban is with Terry Laban. Oh, yeah, Terry Laban. Uh, we discussed it. It was like there's two different types of way to spark creativity. And one is completely blank and one is completely colored, uh, cluttered. And, you know, one. Yeah, right. So and I think mine's the cluttered uh, situation. Yeah. It's interesting out of that clutter comes like a, you know, a clean piece, you know. Yeah, out of the chaos. It's, it's kind of like a, I've always kind of thought of how to, how one would purely make a piece of artwork and and be completely authentic, you know, without any influence from yeah. outside sources. And uh, so something from nothing, you know, and mm -hmm. type of thing. And uh, yeah. I think I go, I do go about that go about that process yeah it's a longer process but yeah but it's one i can live with i take images of things not exclusively but that are um things that people don't notice you know they they, they never think about it yeah you know? the thing that you know you never think about telephone poles but then if you if you hit one you think about it yeah <laughs> But it's, I mean, that's what I like about punk rock too, is that it's such a large span of different sounds and, and uh, attitudes, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, oh, it seems to drive, you'd be a driving, driving force, you know, yeah. it picks you up. Yeah, it does. Did you do the seahorse? Leads a week. Fucking leads a week. You're weak. Just mindless, you know. Can I stand mind, on yeah, this? You could, yeah, you should be able to stand on it. The question is, can I stand on it? I want to get a higher shot of this. But that's kind of why I have this giant, my giant sketch pad is to be able to work, be able to do that and just kind of not feel like I'm trying to make a piece of artwork. I'm just exploring my options. This is interesting. It's like accidental, right? Yeah. It's really, it's pretty cool. If you really want a completely abstract work, that would be it. This one? Um, no, the in completely incidental. Yeah, yeah right. completely incidental artwork, I, yeah. I mean, that hits the wall. That you, That's just, it's by accident. This is interesting, too. I like that. It looks like a plant, somehow. Some of the best experiences here is when you're just you're yeah. tuning out everything and you're just and you're you got you got it when you do have a life 
it, when you do have a whole life outside the gallery and stuff, it's it's hard to tune it out. Yeah. And so I think music plays a large part of that in my experience. Anyway, I like to play it loud and. and uh, you mean when you're making? Art? When I'm kind of in the zone, yeah. I guess, if you want to yeah. say, you know, it's. What do you play, or just mostly punk? Uh, mostly punk rock. It's mm -hmm. kind of what I, a little bit of what I grew up with, and yeah. then I, you know, I, and maybe that's where. Technology has reconnected me with a lot of bands I used to listen to, and, yeah. and you know, expanding from there, bands that I haven't heard of, and yeah. stuff. So it's kind of like iTunes, right? And so it's, it's, it's like I've that. been able to kind of reconnect with my '80s roots a yeah, little, right? Like Besides that. the big hair. Yeah, definitely. Did you have big hair in the '80s? I think I had a I had a mullet at one point. Really, I got MacGyver. <laughs> All right, Richard uh, Dean Anderson. Working the old short long. Uh, does, does no, I just the space I've been in for eighteen years now. Yeah. This this one area. Yeah, this well, seventeen years here. I guess the the year after we opened is when I moved in. I think his stuff is quite strong. Well, that's the thing is that once he started painting, he just never stopped. He, yeah, he, he had pauses, I think, when he went out to California yeah. to work concrete to make money and stuff. And his brother, I think his brother-in-law. We're talking about Chris Antonelli. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that to this thing. And, yeah. and, uh, but he always came back and he produced just hardcore, man. And, uh, it's, get, it's grown to this point, and I think it's great, you know. How long has he done it, you think? Oh, he's a uh, friend farmer, introduced him to us, so maybe at, so it's eight, nine years ago now. So, let's go ahead and one more piece of the game. But you know, it's like those people that call themselves outside artists and stuff, so I don't think they're like kind of self proclaimed geniuses. You know, it's yeah. like it doesn't right. it's actually more. Was that one, um, when, when I was here a week ago, six days ago? Was that one on, on the table there? Yeah. Unfinished? The frame was patched up and... and Seems yeah. like there's more stuff on it now. Yeah, there might be a few more things on it. Wow, that's cool. Cause so I, it's in the film, unfinished, and now it's finished. Yeah. Is there a struggle now? Is there a struggle there's now? There's always there's, a struggle, but is oh, there a struggle now? I think it's... Uh, the struggle isn't so much organizing the shows it's just finding a way to sustain to be self-sustaining you know where it's paying or it's that's always been an issue you know is how to make this place self-sustaining 
created, sustained by the artist, you know, and, and uh, so that's always a work in progress, but, mm -hmm. um, but going with our, our mission and stuff, uh, we also want to keep it relatively inexpensive for artists to be able to work here and to yeah. be able to show here. Next day until I get to Amsterdam, and then I'm, I, I, my luggage is there, and uh, and everything's back to normal. That I mean, that's what a trip uh, entails. You can expect those types of things to happen almost every time you you get up and leave a place. You know, something messed up is going to happen. And so, like these you know? traveler, these standard type tourists. Well, they're like itineraries and shit. I mean, yeah, I mean, my, well, their 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 life is more organized because they have tour guys and crap like that. But you, you, yeah. you're like talking like being by yourself. And the you typical American, do. yeah, the typical American tourist, you know, was had and had what they were gonna do, uh, how they were gonna do it, and everything pre pre uh, destined, I guess if you say want to say, and if. I just basically jumped on a plane landing in Ireland with five grand in my pocket and said I'm, I'm started looking for a place to live, you know, and uh, eventually, I, eventually I got to got to uh, Czech Republic where I really liked it and I knew I could move in and everything, but I was I was already getting low on my funds, so so it was kind of like. If I would have started there, I probably like it, so it probably would still be there. But it, but uh, but doing, but you you just learn to to kind of go where where the wind takes you, I guess. Yeah. No, there used to be a little. Stuff. Rich got it all the way to out. The, to there. the third or fourth one, and you moved it one more. Yeah. Okay, so I got I it to the, two more. I he crawled stretched, out. He stressed oh. all the way out, and I was like, yeah. what are you doing? You're going to fall through, man. I don't want this. I was on my sternum on the two-by-fours pushing the dog. Yeah, I got it out to the third cross member. You had your feet right up here, and you were all the way out there. It's like, yeah. holy shit. That's, but, I didn't even try. It's like you, you're on ice. There. You're on thin ice. That's yeah. all you Yeah, and you don't want to fall through. I wasn't going to. I was just gonna get the duck where it belonged at that moment. The symptoms is he was describing what they did. And here he is. Oh, that's a part of their plot. Like, the way to bring exactly. it's That's like premeditated murder. And, and now he, he's he like, it all out just he to get has it on out. the public Facebook page for Gallery. So I know, like, like, I know. I know. <laughs> right I was, after I, I say like, something. Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, I, like, give me an example of that. Can you think of one? Well, a famous artist. I think Da Vinci's drawings that you can see the under drawings and stuff like yeah. that, and the sketches, and uh, all, any artist's sketches, you know. And, uh, so, I don't know. I just like the, the ability to see the, the process. Yeah. You know, as they were seeing. I've seen some of Hieronymus Bosch's drawings. Yeah. You know, it's like 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 early versions of that tree man in the Garden of Earthly Delights hell panel. And um, yeah, pretty the, weird. The studies. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, ca it captures the the inception of the idea. Mm -hmm. You know, to to a certain degree. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like a, a nice thing to see when you're an artist. Yeah. You know? Um, the finished pieces are good too. He's honestly the best artist in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Even going to you know museums with him, like the you know the Van Gogh Museum and all that. Or no, sorry, the Dali Museum. Sorry, we were talking about the Van Gogh Museum. Mm. Not even that art can compel you know compel me to think mm -hmm. that's he's uh, not as good. Van Gogh is not as good. Or no, I think my dad's better. Yeah, all right. Than any artist.
I look up him. I look up to him the most. I was so the background. I took his background. <laughs> you, Yuri, son of Dan, were five when you did this. Yeah, I did all the little marks, but like you see all the, you know, kind of the stuff that looks like it's painted on. That's all. Mine. That's all yeah. Funny enough, he just he just tell me like grab a painting. Yeah. He grab whatever painting I wanted and just started just to start to draw because it didn't matter. He just liked seeing mm -hmm. me uh, do art when I solo. And Weber. Well, he is very a talented artist. He inspires me to work more. He also is a great father. His son is a very kind boy, and I enjoy their company. Oh yeah, the skull made it. Yeah, I'm gonna have the other skull in it too. But you have two of them. I still want to. I have that one. I got a technical question. How much time does it take to like hang stuff? Hang stuff. How much time do you take at it? Well. If I have all the work and and then it's very quickly. But if I'm waiting on work, finish work, then it gets then it can drag out yeah. the days. And, Are you the final touch man on uh, this gallery before the night before a show? Pretty much, but it's usually pretty pretty well done by the time I'm here. My official role is artist in residence, so I don't know exactly what that means. Just that I'm the oldest guy here. Oh, I see. <laughs> A I R. Back in 2003, when I was a, a member for a few months, uh, like we'd have meetings and we and people would talk about the price of paint at Menards as compared to Fleet Farm. I mean, that was basically the content the content of the conversations. Yeah. Simple and conversations. I found it kind of boring, actually. But um, yeah, I, I dream <laughs> of those simple times again. It would I, be was, I was thinking, paint you know, cost. maybe we talk about art or something. <laughs> But, but I don't know. But I believe that in order for us to be able to grow, we we have to get organized in some fashion. Yeah. So so it is what it is. The inconveniences that come with it are price you pay. Yeah. Otherwise. Business. Business as usual. That's right. That's right. Uh, to me, business as usual. I guess that's just part of our character too. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're not uh, a bunch of wealthy people have uh, with our hobby project. We're working artists who want who want to uh, you know show our art. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether we sell it, whether we sell it or not, it's not so much the the goal, but you know to to have that experience of uh, exhibiting your artwork and, and uh, presenting it to the public is the main goal. Yeah. How long have you been painting? Oh, I've been painting for since probably 
1999. I started. Really? I was an ill. I was an architectural student for three years, and I loved designing houses and, and drawing technically. You know, and uh, and I studied to be an architect, and and uh, it, the architecture became kind of something that I didn't expect it to become, and, uh, and I changed gears in probably like 1991. And uh, started exploring my options. And my father, being an artist and an illustrator, uh, I can't help but believe that that was some influence over my own decision to go into that art. What was his name? Ray. What, his name was Raven B. Weber. He uh, worked for Golden Press and uh, in Chicago as as an illustrator in the uh, 50s and 60s. Hmm. So, and, uh, you illustrated books? Yeah, like kind of illus cartoon illustration, really? whatever it was called for. For kids' books and such? Yeah. Cool. Golden Books uh, published a lot of the Walt Disney books. Oh, wow. And a ton of children's books. Mm -hmm. So he worked on that, and then he was a freelance illustrator to in work to Chicago, went to the Art Institute. So his influence, he, he was always doing his art and uh, and exposing me to museum and things, you know, in Chicago and, and so in Milwaukee and yeah. so it was a, I guess a early, it was an education of some yeah. sorts yeah. in the arts. I was thinking of using the pastels and other ink drawings as Sketch sketches stuff. that I would then make a real nice painting on. Yeah. That's done like that. Yeah. I'd rather be done, up. right? I'm done yeah, with the Yeah, I mean, you're doing the drawing, Fine, you yeah. know, might as well make it a finished hey. piece. Hey, man, how's it going? But that's what this is for, right? Yeah. Walker. I used to sing. Yeah. Yeah. Lunar group writers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, good you used to tattoo. Full size sketch pad if I will, you know, why not? You know, and I can just roll it out. It's, I got about a hundred some feet to go, but. There you go, man. <laughs> that would be one hell of a I love it, man. I'd probably show it once it's done. Yeah, it would be a huge piece for it. Just run, roll it all the way around the room. Yeah, that would be very interesting to see. Ooh, right, right. Yeah, it's a small chance. Yeah. They got a degree from Yale. Yeah. Do. You're a politician. I'm gonna try to get a shot, low angle shot of this bro coming at me. You don't have to move. When you when you start something, do you think that? Do you have any idea what it's gonna be, or do you just start doing it? I just start doing it. Yeah. And so you you you. I, you figure it out as you're going along. Yeah, yeah, that's I think what that's it what I do. Out of yeah. the painting, yeah. you know. I think eventually there's like a mood or a, you know a, a something in the painting that I want to follow, and I'll follow that, and it'll grow out of that. If you're always thinking of things before you produce them, which was what the illustrators did also, you know, they knew exactly what you were making and, you know, when you went at that piece of artwork. I, um, it's, I believe it's, it's been slightly tainted, as I would say. What's been? The piece of art. Dan is a great painter. I love Dan. Like Raphael and all that, Vermeer, they would just paint these incredible uh, images, you know, that, that like, you know, the, the interiors of Vermeer, etc. And they, they did it to such a height of, of like perfection, basically. 
and and even like painters that you never heard of painting at that time, that it's like um, what they're showing doesn't even look real anymore. It just has this like really heightened look. It might it might be a woman washing something, you know, or washing clothes for her kid, and she's got like old garb on, you know. But it's like, man, I mean, your eyes don't actually see that. You yeah. know what I mean? But you might see a woman doing that kind of thing. It has the essence of everything. But the, the way that the paint looks, is just, it's unreal. Yeah. Well, I think at that time, there, at that particular moment with Vermeer and, and, and a lot of those artists, it was a great time of, of scientific discovery, Newton and, and things. And so I think that it was almost like a... A, a time to perfection you know how can you perfect get it, it almost absolutely perfect in a in a technical sense yeah you know where you know and uh the methods and and the the techniques that they they created accomplished the those goals but it was it was consistent with the times that they lived in yeah. So I think that's why it did become it was popular and stuff. You know, ultra realism right now. I I mean it has I'm sure it has its place, and and everything. But I think that people are uh, people want to want. Well, I mean I don't know exactly what people want, but in my personal opinion, I I think that it feels cold and and unrelatable. Which might be a symbolic thing of the work, yeah. Something you're getting across, and that might be make the work successful and stuff. But I think we live in much more turbulent times. That that uh, the artwork being the important artwork right now is going to have quite a bit of expressionism in it. Let's go, hey, oh, let's go, hey, oh, let's go, hey.